Hey, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -da. I'm going crazy here. Uh, this is, of course, you know, the remake of the 1997 PS1 classic Final Fantasy VII for many it's their favorite in the whole series. This is the Final Fantasy game that took the franchise into the stratosphere. There's a lot of love here, there's a lot of nostalgia here, and a remake that we've been waiting for for like a really, really long time. If you've been following since like when they released that PS3 tech demo trailer of the opening intro that they remade back in like 2005, yeah, people have been hungry for this world. If you can't tell from all the expanded movies and media and stuff, they want more of this world, more of these characters. And with this remake, you certainly get a ton of that. I'd say almost everything you as a fan may have wanted. Almost. I'll get to that. But yeah, otherwise, it's it's really, really good. This footage was captured on my PS4 Pro, and I've tried to limit it to earlier sequences or cutscenes that are earlier just to not spoil stuff because a lot happens constantly and even though it's a remake of a very old and known game there are still lots of new surprises so anyway though this is a final fantasy rpg well now more action rpg but to answer the question i, I always get on social media let's be nice here like for for newcomers no you don't have to have played the old game or played any previous final fantasy games before it this is obviously going to be grade school for some people but it's okay if you don't know each final fantasy game is its own thing typically a new world new characters a new adventure so you're fine going in fresh here in it you're cloud strife an anime hair boy ex-soldier mercenary for hire in the futuristic sort of cyberpunk city of midgar the corporation shinra controls everything and harvests mako from the planet which many believe is slowly killing the planet. What follows is a crazy adventure involving long-lost friends, eco-terrorism, fighting for what you believe in, corporate takedowns, and, and a lot more at stake. I'm glossing over a lot, but there, there's too much here, and I'd rather some of you discover it for yourself. Of course, throughout this, you know, the main stuff, the main flavor is the combat. The main default way to play is action RPG heavy. You're managing cloud and doing attacks, blocking and dodging, but you can slow down the combat, open up a menu, and go through healing items, or look at your spells, or trigger your special attacks. You have to wait for a gauge to fill to spend points to be able to do these things and they fill the more you attack block take damage you can also do this for your party members or you can just switch to them to then actively use their specialization like say switching to barrett to more aggressively attack range targets each character often has a special attack separate from their main spendable ability attacks or a special attack stance that you can take advantage of that makes things a bit more fun and gives you a bit more strategy because every enemy requires a very different tool in your arsenal to take them down. It's an RPG still, so everything has a different weakness. Oh, plus every so often you can use your limit break and then there are summons and some of the fun is finding out like the right way to keep pressure on an enemy to then stagger them and leave them more vulnerable for high damage. That's an added layer of depth that I like too. Uh, but thanks to worrying about your ATB gauge, it still doesn't feel completely like straight up action combat. It's still an RPG which makes me very happy. It's got that vibe. It serves as a nice hybrid between the old Final Fantasy VII slower combat and the more active stuff of Final Fantasy XV, but all just kind of way better. I like the combat a lot. At some points, you might think it's a bit mindless, you know, button mashy and just looks cool, but then when things pick up, you really gotta actively, actively block and dodge constantly and also obsessively manage you and your other party members or else you're gonna die real quick actively manage or die that's the name of the game you need a bar on that gauge i talked about before you pop a potion so you gotta work to be able to use that potion the game will surprise you with how difficult it can occasionally get and i enjoyed that quite a bit even if the spike sometimes felt a little random also i will say at times the combat can seem a bit messy because one obviously there's a lot going on on screen all at once all the time but also, it makes it tough to actually tell the attack timings and patterns of smaller enemies sometimes. Like, the tell that they're attacking is, is hard to notice on some. But also, 
The camera is a goddamn mess sometimes. You have to like constantly wrangle it around in battle and sometimes it can get in a weird spot or not show you the enemies and it was pretty frustrating throughout. I feel like video game cameras have been bad for like what like forever now. We've been talking about this since games have been a three-dimensional. I was hoping that we'd finally be past this, but no. Still, it's a lot of fun. It's all super engaging and I like it a lot. The boss battles in particular are often extremely insane and multi-layered and highly cinematic. Now you notice I, I haven't spent too much time on the other RPG elements, you know, equipping different equipment items to give you bonuses, setting different materia, leveling up, stuff like that, because a lot of it is pretty simple. It's nicely done though, it works, I just, like I kind of felt with the original game, wish there was even more customization. Still, the weapon upgrading mastery system is, is the best thing here by far. I love how stuff carries over. Anyway, uh, the being out in the world is the other whole half checking out and exploring massive environments throughout your missions and objectives. Getting to objectives often involve finding the right path, maybe a few very simple environmental puzzles or switches to flip, and of course, enemies to battle through. It's often kind of simple, but there's a lot of story and dialogue spread consistently throughout it all that you don't really get bored except for a couple of seemingly filler parts. The downtime is when you're dropped into the open town environments and you can spend a surprising amount of time in them exploring, you know, listening to NPC dialogue, uh, finding stuff, doing mini games, and even some side quests to get stuff and get a bit stronger. The side missions themselves are often a little bit dull, you know, some have some colorful moments, but ultimately they're just really, really simple and straightforward. Still, I think they do a good job uh, paired with the environment itself to just really give you a sense of place and understanding about the world you're in. You know, in 1997, we had pre-rendered beautiful backgrounds from a, you know, a far off perspective to give us a rough idea. Now we can actually be down in the trenches, experiencing the more real world for itself and the people within it. It's a great thing for fan nostalgia, of course, but it's also fantastic just for some great world building. You know, the story feels like a bigger deal now, now that you have like an even stronger sense of urgency thanks to actually seeing and interacting with this normal world here. The Midgar they built is amazing. And half the fun I had was just, you know, being along for the ride and seeing it all. The, they take the time to really show you lots and lots of sections of it and let you intimately see how Shinra is making it really bad for some and seeing the very clear class divides and how everyone lives. It was actually striking to me at first how normal some of it all felt. You know, NPCs often aren't very over the top and many are just dressed and look like they could almost be in our world. It's weird contrasting with some insane robots and crazy big hair motorcycle anime dudes, but somehow all of it still works and it's convincing and fun. This is thanks to a really good presentation overall. You know, every moment, almost every scene, every bit of dialogue has some flair to it. You know, from comedic writing to just really good cinematography and framing. This game just, <laughs> this game just drips money, man. Like everything feels so high quality and expensive and you can tell this game took a long time to make, especially like right from the get go, the jaw dropping intro sequence alone. Cloud in particular is, is a more convincing main character to me personally this time around. You know, I really like how they portray him. Also, uh, they know and embrace the fact that he's a badass cool sword guy. You know, they know you know it and they make him look cool in a lot of awesome sequences that Final Fantasy VII fans could really only dream of before this. It feels like almost everything is touched with an intense amount of care. You know, I already mentioned the environments themselves being the star of the show, but the character designs are also really cool. From enemies to heroes, Everything updated for 2020 has a look that totally makes sense with the design philosophies of the original game. From lighting to particle effects, this is just like a straight up incredible looking game. And I can't wait for the exclusivity to end and eventually see this sucker running on a high end PC because the bar set here is already pretty great. Except for some weird texture pop in issues in the open town environments that happen way too frequently. Textures kind of like would take a bit to load on random walls and NPCs and they would end up looking weird and smooth and low res and it would be really distracting. Also, the game makes my PS4 Pro really, really loud. Still, it does look great and it desperately, desperately needs a photo mode. I wish it was in here from the start. It should have that. I hope it gets it. The music also completely seals the deal. You know, the reinterpretation of classic battle themes and songs are definitely gonna make some old fans tear up. But for newcomers, there will definitely be some music that will get stuck in your head, trust me. 
uh, and some cool weird remixes too. My one issue is that in some scenes occasionally the music drowns things out. Like the characters are calmly discussing a plan while I intense battle music is blaring over a pretty casual conversation. It just distracts me a bit. It was kind of funny and weird. I don't know, especially considering most of the game has polish. When it doesn't, it kind of stands out. Voice acting is okay. You know, some is really good. The mains are mostly good. The NPCs are corny and sometimes really clog up all the sounds you're hearing as you're going through the towns. Personally, I turned off that option where it shows subtitles for random NPC dialogue on the left side. But I will say, I was surprised by a few famous voice actors that turned up here and there. I didn't, I didn't know ahead of time, and I appreciated seeing them here. But now, of course, I have to acknowledge the elephant in the room. This isn't a complete adventure. This is essentially episodic. Think less like a Telltale game and more like Avengers Infinity War Endgame type of thing. That's what it feels like to me, and it makes up for it. I really, really wish this was just one big Final Fantasy VII game, cover to cover. When I heard the news that they were splitting it up, I was really skeptical. A lot of people out there just refused to buy this game. After playing it though, I'm convinced, man. They basically took the first few hours of the original game and blew it up into an expansive and satisfying epic. This is not a short game. It does not feel cut off or cut short or piecemeal whatsoever. They made a big whole ass game here that leaves off on a good note. This game was made for the people who loved and ate up the original game and all the expanded stuff like like the movies and stuff. This game is giving you all that goodness. It's giving you new perspectives, fleshed out characters, interesting subplots, deeper and longer sequences that were just quickies in the old one, stuff like that. I don't feel gypped out of my money one bit. This is a $60 game and I'm happy that it earns the money it, it puts the work in. I think that some people are angry and confused, and I think that Square Enix hasn't really done messaging the best to get across the fact that this is a massive, worthwhile part one of a saga, feeling less like it's just caught up for profit. People are going to rant and rave in the comments, I get the frustration, but I'm trying to convince you that the game is still worthwhile and lengthy and fun. This is a big budget, single player adventure with new takes on a beloved, interesting, and still relevant story. It's got great graphics, mostly, and really fun action RPG gameplay, mostly. This is the stuff we want, right? You know, aside from a few annoying issues, I'm incredibly happy with it. But of course, that's a before you buy. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. Now I want to hear yours down in the comments. How are you feeling if you've jumped into Final Fantasy VII? the remake. What are your thoughts on some new additions, new perspectives, little shifts and changes? What are your thoughts on the battle system? And also, what are your thoughts on Final Fantasy as a whole? I just love talking about the whole series. I don't know, man. Let us know anything down in the comments, but things get a little crazy, of course. If you got anything else from me, be sure to yell at me directly on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino. But of course, thank you guys so much for coming around and watching these videos. We appreciate it, and clicking the like button does actually help us out. We would appreciate that too. And of course, if you're new, maybe consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.